By the middle of the 19th century, chemists had got hold of about 50 or 60 elements, but they didn't quite understand their relationship one with another. However, some patterns were beginning to emerge. Mike, what have you got for us here? I've got a metal called lithium. One group of elements, the alkali metals, all react with water. It's a bit feeble, isn't it, Mike? It is, yes. A um, little bit like Alka-Seltzer. <laughs> yes, absolutely. But as you go through the group, the reactions become rather more vigorous. Okay, so it's sodium now, is it? Yes, indeed. Potassium. Uh, it goes with a bit of a bang. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. Lithium, sodium and potassium clearly formed a group of similar elements. The halogens, chlorine, bromine and iodine, were another group. There were obviously patterns in the elements, but no one could come up with a single pattern which linked all the elements together. One of the reasons for this was that at the time, many elements hadn't been discovered. So that although they didn't know it, they were trying to complete a jigsaw puzzle when many of the pieces were missing. They were convinced that buried in all that data there was some sort of pattern. But to find it was going to take a lot of time and patience. One of those who set about the task was a Russian, Dmitry Mendeleev. Dmitry Mendeleev had a very strange history. You see, he came from Siberia, the backwash of the Tsarist Empire, and he was the last of 17 children. And as a consequence, his family lived in total poverty. In fact, his father went blind and eventually died, leaving his family in, in tremendous poverty. And then his mother, in one of the great stories of self-sacrifice, his mother basically gave up her life to make sure that her youngest son had an education. His mother uprooted the entire family and took him to St. Petersburg, where she tried to persuade local universities to take him and train him. Well, of course, they said, no, he's from Siberia, the backwash. And yet, just before she died, she was finally able to get her son into one of the academies that then launched his great scientific career. As a young man, Mendeleev became famous for his quick mind and quick temper. He was impatient and very argumentative. He was very driven. He was very determined to do what he set out to do. He was very stubborn. He also became rather eccentric. He grew a long beard and hardly ever cut his hair, but he was totally dedicated to his work. Mendeleev knew everything there was to be known about the 63 elements then discovered, and he was determined to find out about their relationship with one another. And when Dmitry Mendeleev made up his mind to do something, he didn't give up until he was fit to drop. Though he was a very impatient man, he used to calm himself down by playing patience. The aim of the game is to sort all the cards into the right order and the right suits, which was not so very different from what he was trying to do with the elements. Mendeleev took a sheaf of blank cards and wrote down the names of all the 63 known elements together with their atomic weights. He began puzzling over his cards, trying to see if he could place them in groups. But try as he might, he could not find a pattern. He was due to leave on a long journey. But he told his driver to wait. He puzzled over his cards a few hours longer. He sent his driver away. Shuffling the cards around the table, he felt sure that he was on the brink of a breakthrough. But after hours of struggle, exhausted, he fell asleep. He began to dream. The halogens. And as he dreamt, the picture started to become clear. He awoke with a start and arranged the cards in the pattern of his dream. As a result of his extraordinary dream, Mendeleev cracked the problem. And this is what he came up with. A table with all the 63 elements he knew about, 
all laid out in one big array. What he'd basically done was to put them in order of increasing atomic weight, going across here and then across here and so on. But he'd also managed to get all the families together. Look here, the alkali metals, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium. These are the ones that react so violently with water. Then the alkaline earths, beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium. And over on the other side, the halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. He was so sure that he'd got it right that he also made a really important discovery. Just look, look at these gaps. 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 Gaps where elements should have been, but none existed. So he made a prediction. He said, and he had the daring to say, that perhaps these are the elements we should look for. There were several gaps. There was one between aluminium and indium, another between silicon and tin. Scientists aren't usually hailed as geniuses when there are holes or, or question marks in our work. But in this case, those holes were crucial. Those holes were the things that everyone else had failed to spot because they signified the positions of elements that hadn't yet been discovered. He was the first person who spotted the missing pieces of the jigsaw puzzle when he left these gaps and then was so bold as to predict the properties of the elements which hadn't been discovered yet. He was practically laughed out of scientific circles until five years later when someone discovered what was to become gallium, which fitted perfectly in the gap that he'd left underneath aluminium. And 15 years later, the next gap was filled with the discovery of germanium. By comparing the missing element with its neighbors, Mendeleev had accurately predicted its color, melting point, and atomic weight. Well, it took 20 years. But elements like germanium and gallium were found, which then fit the periodic chart, enshrining the name of Mendeleev among the giants of science. The periodic table can be used to make predictions still. Um, it's, if you like, it's a list of ingredients for the universe. Um, it's a recipe book that tells you how you can mix things and what results you're going to get. Curiously, Mendeleev wasn't alone. At almost exactly the same time, a German scientist called Julius Meyer came up with a very, very similar scheme. But Meyer is forgotten, Mendeleev is famous because he made those bold predictions about elements that would be discovered in the future. In fact, he became so famous, they even named an element after him, Mendelevium. There are lots of differences between Mendeleev's original table and the one we use today. More than 40 extra elements have been discovered, and we now list them by atomic number, the number of protons in each atom, rather than by atomic mass. In Mendeleev's time, no one had proved that atoms even existed. Electrons, neutrons, and protons were completely unknown. Mendeleev had uncovered one layer in his quest for the nature of matter, but there were more secrets waiting to be discovered. Scientists now think that most of the universe is made up of mysterious stuff called dark matter. Maybe we have to throw the periodic chart out the window and realize that the 90% of the universe could be made out of something other than atoms. And perhaps somebody listening to this show may win the next Nobel Prize by determining what dark matter is really made of. But if Mendeleev were alive today, there's one thing that would delight him. Remember gallium, that element he predicted should exist? For many years, no one could find much use for it. But recently it's been found that gallium compounds glow very brightly when tiny currents pass through them. And this is where we find gallium today, in the latest form of video screen, the trademark of the information age. Thanks to Dmitry Mendeleev, we've come a long way since those ancient Greeks with our earth, water, air, and fire, 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 earth, water, air, and cold fire. <laughs> that may be the end of that particular experiment. Yes.